I'm going to start recording now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Is Daily Tuesday. <laughs> well, we're going to be missing the first segment. The first segment is uh, the Lozilla. I forgot to start recording before the show. Wow. So we missed the That's first okay. segment. Head on over to uh, my DTube channel and uh, watch the beginning of the show. Yeah, and I'm not sure why this says this live video has ended when the live video clearly has not mm -hmm. ended. I'm going to reload. Uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody else said they're seeing it. Craig said they're, con they're seeing it. I'm not sure what's going on there, folks. That's like they're playing with my heads, man. That, that is, That's not even right. And by the way, it showed that we had like no views or anything, but now I see we, we have 74 views so far, so... I guess what the heck is going on, dude? That's weird. This is this might be the weirdest show that I have ever been a part of. Uh, maybe that's a bit hyperbolic. Yeah, At any rate, well, let's go to our second segment. What do you say we get to our second segment? I'm going to play the little bump for our second segment. Yeah, let's do it. Segment two video bump. Here it is. We scour the interwebs in search of the strange, the useful, the bizarre, the entertaining, and scientific news. Welcome to iScience. Hey, we're back with iScience. So for the iScience segment, we have... I picked this one just for you, okay? Yeah, I figured... You did. You, yep. you you're so you're so lively and alert and engaged. It's pretty I awesome. I am right now. I'm in Do a, animals I'm, have rights? I'm, Why am I no. echoey? In Switzerland, <laughs> lobsters now too. Are you ready yeah. for this? Yeah, you can't boil. I can't, I can't, boil. can't boil lobsters. So the Swiss extend rights to lobsters, and in so doing, they probe the overall question. How should our emerging understanding of animal cognition affect the way we treat animals? And do animals have rights as a result of that cognition? So this story is from QZ.com. I mean, if, if you're going to go ahead and, and give humans rights... It would follow that animals have rights. I'm not Why? saying it's right, but it makes sense. Are you are you wrapping around the whole what are right do are rights rights are spooks basically? Yeah, rights but, are spooks. I'll give it, I, it doesn't matter if I can grab a lobster, throw it in my pot, and boil it alive. No one's really gonna know. The lobster will. Briefly. <laughs> For a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But... A little bit. Holy crap! It's... Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> That's pretty much oh, what oh. uh, But let's try and get this story. Well, I'm going to try to get through this story from like within the State Yvonne State Face parameter where we actually believe that there's such a thing as rights and rights are given to in entities that have some level of cognition and or self-awareness. Yeah. Are you, can we operate on that under that premise? Even though neither you or I actually do operate under that premise. But we'll, we'll enter into pretend land here. So Swiss lawmakers... Uh, I, I don't I don't get this line taking a cue from da William Shakespeare and David Foster Wallace. That's uh, you know, do I not bleed and you know that that the Jewish dude from that play. Dang it, my brain is like I'm not giving you that information right now. Uh, but but they've considered the lobster and its ability to feel pain. And they have answered in the affirmative. So as of March 1st in Switzerland, it will be illegal to boil lobsters alive. You're going to have to use like a 22. You're going to have to put them down with a 22. What? Yeah, you have to kill them first. I would I, just going to use a hammer. Like, what are the alternatives? I don't know, but, but is this that's really going to mess up the taste. Is it going to be any better for the lobster? 
I don't really think so. I, it's so live it's, crustacean. It, it might actually, in killing it before you put it in the water, you may cause it more pain. Of course, this is government think at at work here, so they don't think through things like that. Live crustaceans, including the lobster, may no longer be transport. Oh my gosh, you cannot even transport lobsters on ice or in ice water. It has to be in salt water. Aquatic species must always be kept in their natural environment. Crustaceans must now be stunned before they are killed. Ah, so you can stun them and then drop them. You don't have to kill them. But how do you stun them? How do you stun a lobster? You smash them with a stick. <laughs> that, that doesn't, that might not necessarily stun them. That just might just perturb them. Not that they could do anything about it, but right. they might be yeah. a bit perturbed, a bit scared if lobsters are afraid. I don't see why it's any better either way. If you're going to go that far, then you should just say you can't eat lobster. You going to do that in Switzerland? I don't know. Seriously, could you imagine that? All the, the Swiss chalets with no more lobster? I can't, I can't imagine, imagine that. Imagine, um, the, the lobster trade is too huge in Switzerland. I mean, do they, do they, where do they fish it? Do they fish it or do they import it? I think they import it. But so wait, what do they do? Like, if you want to import lobster, they, I guess they can't. It's got to be no. It's got to be imported in a bucket of seawater. Who the heck is going to do that? Someone who wants to pay way more. Yeah, you just jacked up the price of lobster by fifteen gazillion, whatever's. Yeah, what for shit. Wow. You know what? Maybe that's what's really behind it. Maybe they don't really give a crap. They just want to increase the lobster. cost of shipping. Yeah, there's. It's a. It's a. Um. It's basically a tariff without being a tariff. So it's Jean-Pierre Lobsterio of, of the Swiss government. It's like in the lobster business. And he knows that these, these rich dudes will pay anyway. So he's like, dude, I got an idea. Listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. Let's lobsters pretend. Pain. <laughs> lobsters have feelings. So they do what they got to do to... Jack up the price. I mean, how do you get What's lobsters next, to Switzerland? What's next, cows? You can only transport cows and see. So you actually have to get like a whole field of grass and throw it on the back of a truck. Yes, yes. You can only transport them in a field of grass. And yeah, if they take away my burgers and they jack out the price of my burgers, homie ain't going to be playing. Ain't Unless even going to be playing like that. They might make the law, but forget to change some of the details of it so that you have to actually transport cows in seawater. That would be great. Oh, dude, that would be great. That might actually enhance the flavor. It might. It might make it for <laughs> it. It could. Oh, yeah. Probably the horrible side is probably more likely. I want to read this last How paragraph here. Well, you tell me you, you need to interrupt me as I as I read this last paragraph because you're going to hear some fun. Okay. The country has a long history of being progressive on animal welfare issues. In 2008, Switzerland began requiring all prospective dog owners take a course in canine care before acquiring such a pet. Now, what's amazing, by the way, about Switzerland, as you're hearing this, this nanny state move, Switzerland is one of the most per capita, personally, privately armed countries in the world. These folks, it's a sport. Shooting is a sport. And yet, even though these folks are all well armed, oh yeah, you, you passed a law that's going to require me to take a test to, to go ahead and Get a dog? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll totally comply with that. I, I know I have guns, and we can do something about that if we really wanted to, but, yeah. That's very telling. I'll have to ponder that, because that's... The next segment. That's the next segment? I ponder? 
The next segment is I Ponder. I was not ready to go to that segment yet, but if you oh, want I to, thought, we can go I thought it. you're segueing. No. I'm going to have to ponder on that. And now... Oh, no, I'm... no. <laughs> No, 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 no. I meant uh, literally. I'm like, now I have to think about the ramifications there because here you have a, 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 a state that has really, really excellent gun rights. As a matter of fact, it's like anti-gun It's like the op... It's like... Well, it's not the opposite of gun rights, but it's like... It's hyper-gun rights. It's, it's forcing guns on you. Ooh. You have to have a gun. You Ooh. have to be able to shoot. It's what's her left. No, that's not true. It's not true? No. What are the gun rights? What are the gun laws in Switzerland? Uh, it's if you're part of the militia. And it, there's very strict standards. And you have to have so much ammo. And it has to be kept separately from the guns. And it's so, it's so like, hyper-restricted. But they have guns. They just can't really use them. Okay, so 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 then so then I'm returning back to they don't have the real coercive uh, answer to coercive no crappy moves nanny no. state moves it's, it's all issued and controlled by the nanny state. Okay, and that makes sense when you're going to pass a law that says that you have to take a course to own a dog. That is that is pretty nuts. Oh oh wait. And made it illegal to own just one guinea pig. They get lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Have you get it? Oh, you know what? We're breaking the law. My household. We're breaking the law right now. Is that why he's so quiet and depressed? No, he's actually very chirpy. He chirps all the time. Maybe Talks all the time. Maybe he's crying for his family that you ripped him away from. <laughs> He was in a cage all by himself where we got him. Oh, if bye. somebody ripped his family. It... <laughs> oh, bye. He's a very cute guy, actually. Chester, our guinea pig. He's pretty awesome. He's very friendly. He gets played with all the time. He gets plenty of attention. But we actually are We're going to get another guinea pig for him. So we're working on that. But still, I'm are breaking getting... the law right now in Switzerland. Are you getting a Cat... female? To teach your kid about the birds and the bees? Well, my daughter is 13 and she grew up in the internet age. I'll right. just leave it at that. Well, that, that could mean that could be horrible. You might want to go over it with her. <laughs> <laughs> no, broken glass tide should tide not tide. be a part of this. I don't know where you got that. You're going to be finding Tide Pods in strange places, wondering what the hell's going on. <laughs> Did you see the the donuts that people are making? The some companies are making designed to look like the Tide Pods. I yep. mean that's, that's, and then you saw the, the obligatory comments. That's the free market. See, that's the free market at work. Free market at work. Entertaining our dullard ideas. That's great. So cats, horse, fishes, goats, and sheep each had a chapter devoted to them in two thousand and five Swiss. Animal protection legislation, Wait, which recognized included? what's that? Was, were cows included in that? Cats, horse, fishes, goats, and sheep. No cows. Cows, you're screwed. Fudge the cows. Fudge the cows. They're eating the cows. I don't know why fish. What the, what the heck show? is up with the fish? I might go through a whole show without swearing. Really? You can do it. This be the first time. I think so. Uh, so they de they devoted a whole bunch of leg I don't even know what the legislation is. Boy, you know there is a show there maybe somewhere down the road. A whole show on Switzerland and its animal laws cuz <laughs> it seems quite entertaining. Uh it recognizes that animals aren't quite like other things we humans and our laws consider to be property. So uh -huh. so there you have it. That's that's Switzerland. That is, if you wanna, if you wanna own animals, if you wanna dominate and totally control animals, don't so go to Switzerland. Right. So that's but, that's the end but, of that. But what's weird is if they're saying it's not really property, the government's claiming ownership by enforcing these laws. Well, the government is 
always claiming ownership over people. It's like, yeah. so I don't think uh, they've walked that fully out, though. No. They're micromanaging people, but they don't want to let people micromanage animals. And that yeah. whole guinea pig thing, man, that's that's wild. That's that's pretty crazy. That is, man, well, what's my, fun my image of... Go ahead. I was going to say, what's funny is that they're not bad ideas. I don't necessarily disagree Voluntary. Sure. with that as a practice. But, it, well, yeah, the involuntary portion of it is like, me. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, hey, if I learn that lobsters really can feel and it hurts to boil them alive and eat them, I might want to figure out a way to put them out without causing them pain. I don't know about the state developing but laws. Does, does, to... that, does that law extend to the guinea pigs? No, you could boil guinea pigs alive oh. before you eat them. So there you go. Not a problem. Yep. There are no... There are no such laws protecting guinea pigs. Now, we are going to transition. Are you ready? I'm ready to We're going change. To... I'm going to play the bump for the last... If I can find it here. Where the frick? Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. We are entering this zone now. Pee -pee. Nagging thoughts. Trending debates in the Liberty community. And even random epiphanies are all fair game in I Ponder, where ideas are given space to bloom. Wow. And, and you, we're back. You have, you have 55 posts. I have like 18, and mine's at like 35. So you're better than me. That's I'm what better, you're saying. Statistically, yeah. Yeah. You know what? I got to get that Stanford guy to verify that that's true that stanford dude with the gaydar thing yeah it's, he's a, he's a business major so this actually would fall right in his wheelhouse he'd be he'd be right on point with this one so we're going to i ponder and i ponder is well it's an interesting what the heck why is it saying the video has ended now here's the thing okay <laughs> this is I don't know what's going on tonight. There's just, oh. it's like, and, and and it's like nobody can see the videos. So I don't even know if it's going out the way it should or, or, or what the deal is. But man, just a weird night. We're going to have to rely on, on the YouTube recording here. So this story, I'm, I'm going to start with this story, but this story is just a setup. And I want to go through this real quick. And I want to get to the, the, the loose, easy conversation. So this is about Chipotle. Chipotle is using science, uh, pure science, you know, unwavering, unquestioning, truth-finding science. And they used an AI program to uh, figure out what, what was going on with the quesadilla thing. That, that that was tank tanking and the AI well it right here this is from Forbes so uh, let's see RBC capitals restaurant and packaged food and analyst outlined how RBC capital markets research department uniquely used artificial intelligence to robust robustly understand how social media actions like tweets Google searches blah blah could be linked to the chain's future business health. Among other findings, the bank's machine learning group found that negative tweets outnumber positive tweets in the weeks after this product's launch. Coupled with predictions that labor costs would increase alongside increasing avocado prices, Palmer cited the negative findings of the AI-based analysis as a means to support reducing their price targets for Chipotle from $400 to $330, whatever, uh, that is, that's, I guess that's their their stock price. Thus, substantially cutting estimates on the chain's earnings and sales. This note reflects blah, blah, blah. Uh, Royal Bank's disruptive foray into AI-based research is one of the few North American banks to have meaningfully and publicly invested in this space. Unfortunately for Chipotle, RBC's findings proved that customers did not actually like. What they didn't like was... 
uh, they did a study and the customer said they well they wanted fresh food, and it turned out they didn't want fresh food, even though they said they wanted fresh. And uh, I and I'm in the news business. I've been in for a long time, and I've actually asked my audiences before, what kind of news do you want? This is especially true for my local news projects, and inevitably I get mostly the same answer. We want positive stories. We want stories about people doing good and stuff. And yeah, I do those stories. And guess what? Crickets. Nobody watches them. Nobody, watches them. nobody, nobody does anything with them. Nobody cares. So, so this sets you up for this statement. Science is stupid. There. Where did that come from? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying science is stupid. Well, no, that's the that's the the trolley line to, you know, start well, it's the conversation. Not wrong. I mean, most of science is is guided by ignorance. For every little bit you learn, you unfold uh, way more questions than you do answers. So science is pretty stupid. Well, you did a presentation. Very provocative, very thoughtful presentation, at least I thought, mm -hmm. which was, I, I, it was calling people into question, like, why, why do you have, I think this is the way I read it. Why do you have so much faith in science? And what is science really? Is science truth? Yeah, it's definitely not truth. It's not truth. What is science? Um, practical applications of repeated observations and experimentation to do work. So science is a tool. It's a methodology, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a methodology to get closer to an understanding that you will never perfectly have. No, not even to get closer to an understanding. That's on the individual if that's their purpose. Mainly it is to get closer to utilizing our observations of the world around us, using the world to do something, mostly to do work, either moving uh, high potential, the least potential, or something along those lines, moving things, work. But it's still getting closer to a certain understanding, how to it's effectively move to, in a space. I wouldn't say it's getting closer so much as it's finding different ways to do things. I don't think it will ever get close enough. I don't think there's any way to say we're closer than we are now than we were then. Well, no. I mean, in in a, in a finite uh, moment. So I right. want to figure out I have I have argon and I have I was thinking of another element and I want to figure out, okay, which one should I use to try to for electric current. Yeah. I could use science to do a test that I, that would bring me to a closer understanding. Well, you wouldn't a, use uh, you wouldn't use science. You would I would use the tools. The you would the use the scientific tools. method, not even tools. You would follow the scientific method of experiment making observations and experimentating. Yeah, I'm referring to the scientific method as a tool. Right. Yeah. When yeah. I say scientific tools, that's what I mean. The scientific. Like you don't tools. even necessarily have to like even be aware you're doing science. Like it's a very natural thing for humans to do is to experiment, and then to learn from those experiments and then extrapolate on it and do stuff with it, only to find you were wrong somewhere and then you need to go back and revise it. What was it that triggered you wanting to make that video? That um. Something happened. Well, no, I did that video on the science of spanking. Uh, that's actually what drove that one. Oh, that's right. There was so the science. Like of I'm against spanking. Yeah, I think spanking too. is terrible. It's evil, subjectively, of course. Uh, well, I don't subjectively think it's evil. evil. I think I think a lot of people. No, I said use... subjectively. Right. Well, I'm saying subjectively too. I'm not saying you're wrong. You're saying subjectively it's not evil. You're right, because, well... You're subjectively think, wrong. I don't think anything's evil, but... Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the point that you were making, which I 
get it. And I, I just, when you posted it, I was like, I gave the like it. I was like, I'm just going to keep going on this one. But I poked back in just to see, because immediate, the reactions were, they were, it was like you had just said that spanking is great and everybody right. should be spanking. And all, all doing... you were saying was, hey, you know those studies? They're yeah. Not gonna... Yeah, maybe they're not so scientific. Maybe they're not so, you know, right. this is one of the reasons why I go with that whole I know you love it when I say it, and I know so many other people love it when I say it. That's sarcasm. Stand on your preferences. Yep. I feel much better about standing on my preferences. I don't, I don't like, my argument against spanking is not a scientific study. No, it does, my it argument is against. Be, shouldn't be. What's that? It doesn't need to be, and it shouldn't be. No, it doesn't need to be. You know, my preferences, I do not want to. I do not want to reinforce a pattern of coercive action as a means to alter someone's actions that has not directly uh, gone against you, like in a, in a direct coercive way against you. Using spanking to get your kid not to cry. Not cool, man. You're okay. just conditioning that kid to accept that type of of governance, if you will. Yep. And I prefer not to transfer that type of governance pattern to my child. Right. So I don't spank. But, you know, it's an individual decision. It's an individual preference. It's a, I mean, I, I was spanked. I don't even remember it. So did it have long-term lasting effects in, in tormenting me and ruining my life or being horrible for my learning? I <laughs> I I went to uh I was in an orphanage. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't an orphan. That's a long story, but I was in an orphanage. And we stayed in cottages. They were called cottages and I think it was 12 boys. I think it was 12 boys to a cottage. And we would have matrons, different matrons. I'm going somewhere with this, trust me. Yeah. So the and they were all women for the most part. Sometimes you would have a couple. Every once in a while it would be a man, but it was mostly women. I don't even remember what did we call the men. But the women, we all called the women matrons. So you had different matrons. And they would be on like like Monday through Friday, one matron would be on. Usually it was like there was like a two teams and then there was like a third team that worked like to give the other two teams breaks periodically but you didn't see that matron all that much so you had these two matrons i had mrs hostetler and i had mrs prosick and the way it would work is one of them for a little bit they would go one would work monday through friday and the other would work on the weekend and then they'd switch mrs hostetler never spanked us she was cool I mean, she was, you know, she would discipline you, but she never spanked you. And, uh, you know, things were pretty cool, pretty calm. Kids were more or less behaved. And then there was Mrs. Prosick. Mrs. Prosick, every night we had study hall, study hour, study hour is what we called it. And we'd, we'd go to the, to the living room or the dining room area. There's this big table we'd sit around. And she would literally come to the study hour with a bag of candy and a paddle <laughs> and you knew you had a decent chance of either getting the bag of some of the candy or the paddle interestingly i was only spanked by her maybe once right. but i saw a number of other kids that were spanked way more than once it was a regular thing and i'm gonna tell you even though i was only spanked by her once even though I was actually one of her favorites, she loved me. I couldn't stand her, but she loved me. And I was one of her favorites. I got preferential treatment. I was still, when I knew, when I was in school, and I knew, you know, that, like if, if Mrs. Hostetler was working that, that Monday through Friday, and I knew Friday night I'd be coming home, 
to the cottage. Yep. And Mrs. Prosick would be on. I would be in ever loving terror. It was it was terrible. It affected my Friday and then in the reverse when Mrs. Prosick was going to come on for the week. And then that Monday morning, you know, that Monday afternoon going, and I knew Mrs. Prosick was coming on. I'd be in absolute terror. And I spanked my daughter three times total in, in her life, but between the ages of five and seven. And then that was it. I, I never spanked her again. And, and she was terrified of me. I didn't realize this till later. She was terrified of me. Mm. And, she, you know, I would, I always had that last thing hanging over her that, you know, I go through this, this succession of punishments like a jailer. And she always knew the last thing was you get the spanking at the very end. That was the last thing. And she would never get there. She would never get there except for three times. Right. And she's terrified. So I have, personal I, I and but again i don't know if i'm typical or if you're typical but i know one thing unless i knew for sure i wouldn't want to mess around with with exacting that level of terror on a child because i'm telling you i'm i still have issues i'll just say even though she only spanked me once i still have fear you if i hear the name mrs prosick there is a fear that comes over me even though I was only spanked once. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. But that's a lot. To, see, and that's, that's one of the reasons I even made that video is because when you, the, the actual studies, only four of them have a definition, a limited definition for what spanking is. And it's two open hand pats on the butt only four of the 75 studies used the other 71 studies had no discretion on what the definition of spanking was wow. how it applied or when that should have been maybe a starting point yeah you know define your terms <laughs> they didn't but they didn't define their terms and Nope. Yeah, I mean the 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 point and being basically they they they're lumping they're lumping uh, spanking the most conservative definition with straight out abuse to determine this uh, correlation. So they would need a a a gradated study. Like even for me, you know, you could argue, you know, it was it was a. I mean, Mrs. Prosick, I mean, she's not my, she wasn't my parent. She right. was, I was, I was in a situation where I was actually away from my parents and that probably enhanced things in and of itself. Right. That uh, increases so, the terror, that increases the everything. It, it, it basically, you can't isolate the variables. If you wanted to do an appropriate study to find out if spanking affects the cognitive growth and development of a kid beyond outside factors, you would have to design a completely unethical study. You would have to spank children in multiple control groups, in multiple ways. Yep. And in track isolation. the results. In isolation, yeah. Yep. And track the results over years. In order yeah. to actually have a study with any kind of significance yeah but it, it's like when it comes to guns people want to they want to turn to these gun studies so you got gun studies that show more guns is more better and then you got other studies that show more guns is more bad and i'm like i don't really give a crap about the studies i'm telling you i insist that i have the tools for self-defense so if you want to try to deprive me of those tools for self-defense, I'll have to, I'll have to weigh the the benefit to the cost and what I think I, you know, to determine what action I'll take as a response. But it's not going to be reviewing a study. No, it's not even going to come into play. No, not at all. And even and even for spanking, I'm not going to get into a long argument with somebody about 
I'm, I'm certainly not going to whip out studies. I'm just going to say, you know what? One thing I do know for sure is that spanking, and you know, I can't even say this absolutely because it doesn't necessarily transfer this value system. I'll just say it opens up a door, and I don't even want to go down that road. It opens up a door to transfer this type of coercive governance pattern. Yeah, and that's why it I opens the door. Can't deny I that. Anything beyond that, I, I don't know. You right. could have somebody that's been spanked all their lives, and they they turn out to be the most anarchy of all anarchists in the world. And then yeah. somebody else is going through peaceful parenting and everything else, and they end up being a Nazi. You don't know. You don't, don't know. know. You don't yeah. know. And there's so many other factors that that contribute to these decisions and how your philosophical outlook and and how you yeah everything. Um. So and that's and that's where that's what pisses me. Oh, is that a swear? Pisses me off. No, nah, it's fine. Okay. I'm not gonna count it. Can't count it. Um. That that's been allowed on shows. So go ahead. Yeah, but that's what really ticks me off. Is, is that people are using science to back up these arguments that, and then totally missing the point. Someone's already convinced, someone already feels a certain way, and you're, you're throwing facts at them in these heavy studies that you haven't even read yourself and trying to convince them to change their position. You, you should be taking the emotional standpoint. You should be trying to connect with them, understand, and show them. You, you don't... The scientific study yeah. phony is totally superfluous. And if and yeah. in a way, I think it's more harmful to the argument. It's at least effective. It's less effective. It's ineffective. I think it's ineffective because people who are going e to look at studies to help make up their mind are gonna find their studies. Looked, they've already looked it up. Well, the people that are not gonna look up the studies, uh, they're gonna Google and if they find one study that confirms their belief and five studies that don't, that's it. That one study. Yep. <laughs> and you can find the studies that say spanking is good. You can yep. find them. There's probably more of them. And you know, get, getting back to the science thing, and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, one of the, one of the you you kind of hinted at uh, the point I'm going to try to make here. Science is, it's really, science is really the scientific method. The scientific method is a way for you to gauge a, you know, cause and effect to a certain degree, but even then not, not, you know, it's, I mean, just because cause and effect, you don't know. It's to understand you know, the natural forces in the universe and how to make them work for you. Understanding the natural forces such as you are able to, because th that yeah. right from the start, you're significantly limited. But the scientific method, it doesn't, it, it's not like this huge umbrella of, of knowing that, that jumps out and is exploring all of the possibilities that is set before you. For it every is significantly limited by the possibilities that you see. Right. For every little node of knowledge, for every little node of repeatability and usefulness, there's about a gajillion others that sprout from it that are unknown. Yes. So science so is not... For, ev for everything we learn, we unlearn even more. I don't know that I'll say that's absolutely true. Um I don't know that we unlearn it so much as well, not necessarily unlearn. It's, it's we, put we in learn, a place that we're not accessing. We we learn that we don't know as much as we thought we did. Okay, okay. If so, it is the you know if you're if you're it's on the, top of the iceberg, it's the propagation of ignorance, and it's not a bad thing. If you're on top of an iceberg, then you see the iceberg, and you're getting to know the iceberg, and and in getting to know the iceberg, you put your head under the water, and then suddenly you see, holy crap. So now you know more about the iceberg. But yep. in knowing more, you now know you know less <laughs> than you thought you did. Exactly. So that's, that's the yeah, point. So, so it's not that's that we unlearn. It's that we learn 
that there's these vast fields of, of stuff that we don't know that applies to what we were thinking of that we didn't realize applies. Right. That, that, and, that, and, that's how, that. and that's how I went from uh, the science of spanking to science is wrong. Yeah, and you're not saying science is wrong. You're just a, uh, just like, and I'm not. I mean, the title of the show is, uh, you know, uh, lobsters' lives matter. Science is bad, but science is not bad. Science I mean, some guy, fine. some guy commented on my Steemit post, and uh, he went on about yada yada. You're wrong about this, and I think it's really this way. And he doesn't even real. I didn't respond to his last one because he's just repeating what I said in the video. So I think he just read the title. Yeah. Right. Watch it. Um because he ended up basically agreeing with me and then trying to find some level of disagreement, but it was I don't it, it's just not there. <laughs> There's no there there. There's no, no there there, folks. And on no. and on that on that note, I'm gonna wrap this show up. You get any Last comments before we head on off. Maybe next time there's a State of the Union address. Maybe we well, do some. Maybe do it an earlier show or a later show. Or we find out how to get it plastered on here, and we can do like some mystery science theater. Yeah, that's a better idea. That actually would be better because yeah, they're be always on Tuesdays. Fun. So maybe maybe next year you and I will do a mystery science theater of of State of the Union. Because we're not going to treat it seriously. No, Mis not mystery neither science, one of us. Mystery Science Union. <laughs> we can actually yes. still do it. We could do a recorded session. We can watch it back. Like next week? Or sometime during the week. I don't know. During the week? the week? I'm busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me do too. Do you see what I do during the week? No. You don't? No, I sometimes, yeah. I watched you today in the car. Your, oh, did uh, you? That's uh, cool. That's cool. Headlines you might have missed. Headlines you may have missed. That is correct. Yep. Yeah. I, I really like doing that show. I'm hoping it gets... Actually, it did pretty good for views for off of my... I just do it on my personal Facebook, personal Facebook page. But anyway, I thank everybody for joining us here on Is Daily Tuesday. Those who chose not to... Uh, Pay attention to the Kabuki Theater going on tonight. Yeah. And I'll be back tomorrow night with Niz. And we'll be doing Is Daily Wednesday. We have Newsfire. We have Skynetter, which is Dystopian Tech and Liberty Tech. And then tomorrow, uh, uh, no, or, or at that, that's at the same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this facebook page if you're watching on facebook if you're watching on youtube go to facebook and make sure you like the liberty principle facebook page but we're also on d live on wednesday i guess we'll be on d live on tuesdays now right yep what's that channel that we're on uh you're just on my channel uh bodhi agora yeah, which is bodhi agora just so just that D live what, what's the url for d live um uh d l i v e dot i o slash uh, hashtag slash live stream slash Bodhi dot Agora. I will try to include <laughs> that link in uh, YouTube and the show page. I'll, and I'll copy paste that. it. You can see it on yeah. Steam. It. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll be back here tomorrow afternoon at 1230 PM Eastern standard time for headlines. You may have missed. Thank you very much for joining us here today for is daily Tuesday. We'll see you on his daily Tuesday, we'll see you next week. Next time. Next time.